Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Marie Curie. We're gonna plant tomato plants in here. What we have here is a 16 foot by 10 foot area. It's at the end of our old chicken coop and chicken run. You can see there's our new chicken coop and chicken run behind me. This has been planted with a cover crop all winter long. It was about that high back in the end of February. I took this temporary fence down, let our chickens get in here. They have picked it all over, scratched it all up. I went ahead and planted another cover crop in it um, back at the end of February, the beginning of March, and it's grown up this much since. Now this is downhill from our old chicken coop and chicken run. So all the chicken manure and chicken litter has washed in here over the years. So that's why I decided to plant tomato plants in here. Last year, we grew some huge tomato plants in here, and I'll try to insert a, a picture of them uh, in the video so you can see it. So we're gonna try it again this year. Uh, we have our big garden spot up the hill, but this is just a great little area. It's fertile. The soil was terrible when we moved up here. It's very sandy, very rocky. So. Over the years, the chicken manure is washed in here and it's made a great place to grow plants. Now, I like to do no-till when I can, so that way it keeps all the soil microbes, uh, all the mycorrhizal fungi growing, and everything that's beneficial to your plants. The earthworms in here, we have some night crawlers that are eight, nine inches long in here. If you come out here after a big rain, you'll see them on top of the soil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna terminate this cover crop. And to do that, I'm gonna take my weed eater. I'm gonna weed eat it as close to the ground as I can. Then I'll come back in with just a small spade shovel and I'll dig a hole to plant our tomato plants. Then where our tomato plants are, I'll put a big mound of compost around them. And then in between the rows of tomato plants, I'll put landscape fabric. So that way I don't dis disturb the soil, don't disturb the microbes, all the beneficial organisms that are in the soil, and the earthworms that are in the soil. So that way, basically every time it rains, you're getting worm castings, you're getting chicken manure that comes into here. So the plants have everything they need. Uh, throughout the winter, I would dump my wood stove ashes in here too, and dump them in our orchard. I dump them in our other good garden spot. Uh, that's a great source of potash for the plants. So they should have everything they need right here to grow. So what we'll do is today we'll go ahead and terminate this. We'll go ahead and get our tomato plants planted and get compost on it and get landscape fabric down. Now one thing I do want to talk about, I have winter wheat in here. I have clover in here. I have kale in here, which the kale I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick real quick. I'll probably do that off camera. Pick the kale so that way we'll have kale salad this evening uh, for supper. But after I get that done, then I'm going to go ahead and take the weed eater and go ahead and weed eat all this down. Uh, I might sh not show you all that in the video because it may take a few minutes or I may just speed it up so that way you don't have to sit through me weed eating uh, on it but we'll go ahead and get that taken care of. Look, there's even some hairy vetch in here. Uh, hairy vetch is excellent for your garden spot because it has deep roots and it'll go down and it'll break up your soil and it'll help your soil retain more moisture on it. So we'll get started. Picked all the kale, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the weed eater fired up and go ahead and weed eat this down and then we'll get our tomato plants planted in here. Okay, now we've terminated our cover crop. I don't know if you could tell in the video, but I was tilting my weed eater head sideways. That way I could cut right down to the dirt. I'm gonna leave all of this on top, the whole cover crop. That will help suppress the weeds and that'll put nutrients back into the soil because that'll be good organic matter. 
So now what we'll do is we'll go get our tomato plants. We'll come back with a small spade. We'll dig a small hole, plant the plants in it, put our cages around it, put our compost around it, and then lay our landscape fabric. I'll show you how I plant one tomato plant, and then I'll probably just do a time lapse of everything else. Uh, so that way you don't have to sit through the whole thing here. So what I have, I have my tomato plants, just a small shovel, have some BioLive. Um, I like the down to earth products. It's all natural fertilizers, um, OMRI listed. And I have some back guano in here. I buy it in 10 pound bags. So I just put a little bit in there. So what we're gonna do is just dig a hole, plant our tomato plant, and then either use a small piece of bamboo, or if you know anybody that uh, hunts with bow and arrows, they probably have a bunch of old arrows laying around. These make great stakes. And then we'll put a cage around it, and these will hold the tomato plants until they get big enough to, uh, for the tomato cages to hold them on it. So let's get started. So what I normally do is just make a small hole Put a little bit of back guano in it. I don't know if you can see. And then a little bit of our BioLive in it. And this is one tablespoon. I just use about half of it and then just mix it up. Then after you get it mixed up, take one of your tomato plants. Dig down in there. We'll go a little deeper with it. and then pack your soil back around it. Now, once we get our soil packed around it, put in the bamboo stake, or like I said, you can use an arrow. If you know anybody that bow hunts, put it down in the ground. And there's several ways you can support these. You can either use these little stretchy clips, which I like. Uh, you can buy those little spring-loaded clips or you can use the garden tape. Um, this is just regular plant tape. Um, it's not sticky, they call it tape. Um, just make sure you tie it loosely around it. You don't want it tight, you wanna give the plant room to grow. So if you use these little clips, you can just go around it and clip it like that and you're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant the rest of these tomato plants and I'll probably just do that on time lapse uh, and then cut it in, add it to the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Well, we have all our tomato plants planted. We have our landscape fabric down. I still have to come back in here, put compost over them, and then take and put cages around them. But I want to talk about our landscape fabric for a minute. This isn't normal landscape fabric. Um, yes, it is breathable, water does go through it. But what this is, is this is silt fence. And if you're ever driving around and you see a road construction job and they have a little short fence set up around it, anywhere there's bare soil, especially if it's on a hill, they put this stuff up so that way the dirt doesn't erode away. And you can stop at those construction sites, talk to the superintendent, tell him what you're wanting to do, and most of the time they'll give it to you when the job's over. Uh, so you can get it for free. And it's super thick, you can't rip it um, at all. Sometimes it does have some fencing on it, which is good because you can use it in other places on your farm or your homestead. And then it just has little hog rings on it that you just gotta pull loose or take a pair of cutters and cut them loose. But you can get it for free. And like I said, it's super thick. It's everywhere, every construction job um, road construction will have this up because the EPA makes them do it. So if you'll just stop in there, talk to the superintendent, find out who's in charge. Generally when the job is done, you can get this for free. I have 
hundreds and hundreds of feet of this stuff where I've stopped and talked to them. Also, when they're doing new road construction, this stuff comes in 12 foot rolls, 12 feet wide, and they lay it down underneath the road um, before they start building the road. Once they get the grade done um, and the gravel, they'll lay this down uh, as a barrier. So you can also stop anytime you see new construction like that. And a lot of times they'll have part of a roll left over. In fact, I have a part of a roll that has about 200 feet on it um, and it's 12 foot wide. Now you do have to cut this either with a sharp knife or with a utility knife, something sharp because it is tough, um, but the weeds will not grow through it. This stuff is about three times as thick as what you can get at the big box stores. And that's expensive. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or one of those stores and, and buy a, a lot of landscape fabric, it can get expensive. So just stop, find your road construction site, and you can get it for free usually. Now, another thing that I do, is I use these landscape staples to hold it down. Now I bought a box of a thousand of these for $10 at a yard sale. Um, you're probably not gonna be that lucky, um, but you might be, keep your eye out for them. But these little stakes hold it down great so the wind doesn't blow it up. And uh, you just put you one every few feet. I'll probably on this one put uh, two on the ends, on each end, each corner, and maybe one or two down the center to keep the wind from blowing it because we get a lot of wind where we're at here. And then uh, that'll hold it for all year long. And then at the end of season, I'll pull these up. I put them in a box, put them up, and I roll my landscape fabric up. And just set it down somewhere, put it out of the way. And then next year, your landscape fabric is already cut to size and your staples are good to go. Now these will rust um, throughout the year, but they, they last five, six, seven years easy um, before they rust so much you can't use them anymore. These are brand new ones. Um, I used all the used ones already that I had. So I'm gonna be using new ones on this one. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do another time lapse, putting the landscape fabric down, um, stapling it down, and getting the compost in. And then we'll check back with you when we're done, completed, and uh, 